Welcome back guys. Today we will be going over how to use right click detection within a Minecraft data pack. So I have a few examples uh, set up already for us. So one of them is I right click with the saddle and it spawns in a little horse for me. And I zoom around, zoom around. If I take the saddle off, you'll notice if I right click, it won't summon a horse again. If the horse is dead though, I can summon a new one, and then I can ride it, and so on forth. Uh, another one is, uh, another cool one, is when I right click with this sword, it's going to set some pillars of dirt beneath me. So I kind of like I, uh, I jump up, and this one has a cooldown of five seconds, so I can't spam it, but it will, after five seconds, I can use it again. Uh, next one up is the meteor. I right click with this and about 15 blocks from where I'm looking the Fireball will come down and shoot at the ground. So I'm spamming it. It does not click at all After the 10 seconds, I will be able to use it again there we go. And this one doesn't have a cooldown this one. I just summon a fireball right in front of my face just By using right click I can summon a whole bunch And throw them all about so Here's kind of how you want to set this up. So if we go on over to MC Stacker, right, we want to go ahead and give ourselves any item we want. So if I'm using a sword, and then we want to go to this food tab, and we'll set the nutrition zero, saturation zero, can always eat is true, eat seconds. We want this to be a really big number. Um, so anything works. So we could do 99996. Right, and so this will, um, the reason why we want to do this is no other food is going to relate to this one. So only whatever we set our item to be can be unique. Right, so once we have this, we have this item, and we'll just call this uh, our demo, just so I know what's, which sword this is. So we can go ahead and give this to us in Minecraft. And we can right-click this sword. You can see when we right-click it moves down a little bit okay right now it doesn't do anything though we need to trigger an advancement so within your data pack inside of your namespace you can create a folder called advancements and inside advancements you can go ahead and copy this uh, i'll probably put it in the description all we are is we're looking for uh, the trigger of using an item okay that's our right click Upon the conditions that this item has zero nutrition, zero saturation, can always eat true. And whatever our eat seconds time is, we want to put it in there. So if I'm making a new one, I'm just going to copy paste this. New file, we'll do this demo. Advancement.json. And we'll go ahead and paste it in. And we want this to be uh, 996. Okay, and then the rewards is how we're going to actually move this about. So inside of functions, this can either be in another folder or just a file inside functions. So I put mine in spells. So for the meteor spell, if we go down to meteor, okay, all we're doing is we're executing at our location, and then we're just going to summon a fireball. With the explosion power of 3B, this just will increase its damage output. And then this power is our motion. So we need the motion to go down by negative 0.3. You can change this number on how fast you want it to go down. So for our demo, right, if we um, just copy paste this one for our demo. So we need to make a new file for our function. So we'll call this one demo dot mc function so if we want this one let's say we want it to be really fast right we could put this to be well you know negative 1.3 this will be really really fast what if we want it to be like start off higher in the sky we could make it start off 40 blocks in the air still 15 away we can change that so the third number is how far in front of you and the second one is how far above you the first one is to the left or the right and so our cooldown is we're just going to schedule a function 
um, for however long our cooldown one is going to be. And then all in the cooldown we need is we're just going to revoke the advancement. So for our demo, we can just uh, copy this. And then we want to make sure we revoke the correct advancement, which would just be the demo advancement. Otherwise, you're only going to do this once, and it won't be able to click that again. We need to revoke the advancement for this to work continuously. So now that that is all set up, if we go back to our world with the data pack in it, and we reload, this will summon a meteor. Um, you'll notice it does have that 10 second cooldown, so I can't spam it, but it comes down pretty fast. And that's kind of the gist of how it'll work. Uh, I can quickly show you guys uh, what I thought was the coolest one, which is the horse. Uh, getting that to work correctly. I also want it to work for multiplayer. So for the horse, we immediately revoke the advancement. And then we are going to store a scoreboard okay, for ourselves. And the way we're going to get that score is using our identification number in Minecraft called the UUID. Every player has a unique number, and there's four different numbers within the UUID. I'm just going to use the first one, so we use UUID 0. And so this is just going to store whatever that number is into my scoreboard for myself called the horse counter. Okay, so in my load function, I just created a horse counter, which is just a dummy scoreboard. And then I am looking at um, unless, right, uh, my score is equal to uh, this made up entity score, which the first time I do it, it won't be because this won't have a score and mine will. So it'll be like, you know, some number compared to zero. That's not equal. So then this is going to summon the horse. And those are just the stats that I gave it. And then. If it is just for single player, we can just, unless this horse with these specific attributes exists, which isn't possible for vanilla to summon on its own, then it'll then just summon the horse uh, for it to work. And then the way we make it so that uh, it will, we need to give the hashtag horse a scoreboard. So we're just going to score it to be the same value that we just gave ourself uh, to look at it. So as this runs the first time, right, yourself is going to have your score of, let's say, like 1, and this is going to be, like, by default 0 or whatever. And so 1 doesn't equal 0, so it'll summon the horse. The second time you try to right-click it, okay, it's going to look, and it's like, oh, hashtag horse is the same as you. 1 equals 1. We're not going to run this. The horse is still alive. We're not going to run this. And then this one isn't going to do anything because nothing changes. So then no horse will spawn. Uh, for the fireball one, it's very, very simple. All we're doing is just revoking the advancement, and we're just going to summon a fireball. Uh, I did it at the eyes because in my server, or the data pack I want to use, I'm going to have it uh, scale, armor scale with your size. So I want the fireball always at the eye level when you summon it. And then the TP one, uh, which does have a cooldown, right? All the cooldown is is just revoking the advancement. Is we're just going to uh, fill the dirt beneath us and then TP above it. So it's very, very simple stuff. And the way you can distinguish between different advancements is just by incrementing the each seconds by one, starting at a very high number, and then just going down so that they're all different so that they don't overlap in their triggering. And that will do it for this one.